Госпожа председатель, уважаемые коллеги, пандемия коронавируса COVID-19 pandemic has shown us how vulnerable humankind is when facing biological threats. It has already taken and continues uh, taking a huge number of human lives. In 1975, when the Convention on Banning the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention came into force, we had the hope that the world uh, managed to get rid itself of, of at least those biological threats which are created by men, because everyone who signed this understood the huge risks of using biological weapons and decided to forego any plans to develop it. Unfortunately, we have reason to believe that uh, these hopes uh, have not been fully fulfilled. We convene, convene the meeting today because, uh, as Russia is conducting a special military operation in, in Ukraine, we discovered a truly shocking fact of emergency cleanup by the Kiev regime of the traces of a military biological program which is being implemented by Kiev with support by the United States Ministry of Defense. Our Ministry of Defense, Russian Ministry of Defense, now has documents which confirms uh, that on the territory of Ukraine there was a network consisting of at least 30 biological laboratories in which very dangerous biological experiments are being conducted, aimed at strengthening the pathogenic qualities of the plague, anthrax, tularemia, cholera and other lethal diseases using synthetic biology. This work is being done uh, and uh, funded and supervised uh, by the Defense Threat Reduction Agency of the United States, including in the interest of the National Center for Medical Inten Intelligence of the United States Ministry of Defense. The key role in implementing this program was placed by the Central Reference Laboratory with the Biosafety Level 3 using for its the basis of the Ukrainian scientific uh, anti-plague institute named after Mechnikov and located in Odessa. An active participant here was also conducted by research centers in other cities uh, of Ukraine, in Kiev, in Lvov, in Kharkov, in Dnepr, in Kherson, in Ternopil, in Ushgorod, and Vinitsa. The results of this work were being sent to military biological centers in the United States, including into the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases, into the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, into the Naval Medical Research of the U.S. Navy, and into the U.S. Army Biological Warfare Laboratories in Fort Detrick, which used to be uh, being key facilities of the American program to develop biological weapons. All of these materials are available on the website of our Ministry of Defense, and our Ministry of Defense is uh, uh, describing them in the course of their daily briefings. Let me just dwell on the more salient examples. Our military became aware of the details of the project UP4, which was being conducted in laboratories of Kiev, Kharkov, and Odessa. The goal is to study the possibility of spreading particularly dangerous inf infections using migratory birds. And this includes the highly pathogenic uh, influenza H5N1, whose lethality for people reaches 50 percent, as well as in the Newcastle disease. Yeah, there was another project uh, where the vector of the potential agents of biological weapon uh, bats were considered. Amongst priority areas for study, they include the bacterial and viral pathogens that could spread from bats to people, such as uh, plague, leptospirosis, and as well as filoviruses and coronaviruses. As can see from the project documents, the United States actively funded the biological projects in Ukraine. Experiments were being conducted to study the spread of dangerous diseases using ectoparasites such as lice and fleas.
Even the non-specialists understand that such experiments one of the more, are one of the more reckless because they do not give you an opportunity to control how the situation is going to develop further. Similar studies using lice and fee, uh, fleas as agents were conducted in the 1940s by the infamous Squad 731 of the Japanese Army, whose members, by the way, found refuge in the United States and escaped justice. Ukraine uh, has a unique geographical location. A whole uh, number of uh, migratory routes uh, cross there for potential spreaders of disease, and many of them go through Russia and Eastern Europe. The research I just mentioned uh, was conducted at the very heart of Eastern Europe and in immediate proximity of the Russian border. As uh, the other uh, data we received shows us, the birds which were ringed and released uh, uh, as a result of bio research in Kherson Zoo, they were caught in Ivanovo and Voronezh Oblast of the Russian Federation later. And the analysis of the materials shows that there was a transfer from bio laboratory in, in Kharkov abroad of about 140 containers with ectoparasites of bats. And we do not know what was the further fate of these dangerous materials and what a consequence is going to be of the fact that there was no international control there and they will just simply will simply dissolve quite probably over Europe. In any event, there is a very high risk that they will be stolen and used for terrorist purposes or for to the, that they will be sold on the black market. Using the pretext of uh, curing for coronavirus, the, from Ukraine into the Walter Reed Institute in the United States, several thousand samples of uh, blood serum of the people was taken, and most and most of them are of Slavic extra extraction. Everyone knows how careful people in the West are when it comes to transferring the bio biomaterials of Western nationals um, um, abroad. And uh, there is reason for that, because in theory, bioagents can be created which can selectively target specific ethnic groups. At the same time, the activity of biological laboratories, uh, who we know we notice have been active since 2014, and is imp and what is being implemented by the United States within the program of so-called reform of uh, Ukrainian healthcare, led to a uncontrolled growth uh, in Ukraine uh, when it comes to particularly dangerous and economically important infections. There is a growing number of. German measles um, um, cases, diphtheria and tuberculosis. Cases of measles uh, went up by a factor of more than 100. World Health Organization declared Ukraine a country with a high risk of a, an outbreak of poliomyelitis. There is also evidence to show that in Kharkov, where one of such laboratories is located, in January 2016, 20 Ukrainian soldiers died from the swine flu and 200 more were hospitalized. By March of the same year, in Ukraine, 364 people already died from swine flu. Um, the outbreak of African swine fever in Ukraine have become a regular occurrence. In 2019, there was an outbreak of a disease which symptomatically is very close to plague. At the time when the military biological uh, studies in the United States were, um, com were, were removed because of danger to the people, the Kiev authorities basically agreed to make their country into an experimental platform and using their citizens as guinea pigs. These experiments with a potential risk for the entire country is something that went on for years. And we can see in this yet another confirmation of an extraordinary cynicism of uh, um, Kiev's mentors who tell us all the time that they're very concerned by the fate of the Ukrainian people. If uh, we are to believe what is being said by Reuters and the WHO recommended that Ukraine should um, eliminate the particularly dangerous pathogens they have to make sure that they avoid leaks, otherwise they, this could lead to the spread of diseases amongst uh, the population. And we don't know whether 
UK have implemented that recommendation. Um, the Ministry of Defence of ours has materials stating that all of the serious studies of high level of danger in biological laboratories in Ukraine were conducted under the leadership of specialists of the United States who had diplomatic immunity. Currently, according to our Ministry of Defence, the Kiev regime, um, according to the request of their Western mentors, are trying to clean it all up to make sure that the Russian side does not find direct evidence that the United States and Ukraine are violating Article 1 of Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention. Their uh, biological programs are being urgently um, uh, closed up, and the Ministry of Health of Ukraine said it has a goal to, as of the 24th of Fe Fe February, uh, fully destroy the bio-agents bio in laboratories. The analysis of instructions in labor laboratories tells us that the order of liquidations is aimed at their irretrievable elimination. The, uh, our analysis shows that in Lviv alone, 233 containers with leptospirosis agents were destroyed, 30 with tularemia, 10 with brucellosis, 5 with plague. Overall, 320 containers. The nomenclature and the excessive number of biopathogens leads us to believe that these work were conducted within the framework of a military biological program. I would like to address my colleagues from Europe separately. Right next to the European Un Union, you've had an experimental platform for extremely dangerous biological trials. And we call upon you to think about a very real biological danger to the people in European countries, which can result from an uncontrolled spread of bioagents from Ukraine, which, as we have seen with COVID-19, is impossible to stop. And if there is such a scenario, then all Europe will be covered by it. Representatives of the United States um, are provide confusing information about the involvement of the United States in this activity. Victoria Newland, Assistant uh, Secretary of State, basically confirmed uh, the uh, fact that that there were dangerous um, um, uh, studies being conducted in conducted in Ukrainian lab laboratories in Congress in 8th of March. There was a direct question put by Senator Marco Rubio, and she replied and said that in Ukraine there are research structures which should not end up in the hands of the Russian armed forces. End of quote. At the same time, the State Department continue insisting that the, on the territory of of Ukraine, there are no um, laboratories under the control of the United States. We would like to, in this regard, put the put a question to the American delegation. How can this tally with the agreement of 2005 between your Ministry of Defense and Ministry of Health of Ukraine about cooperation in the area of uh, um, development technologies and pathogens, which could be used so as to develop bioweapons? This document exists in the internet and in line with Article 3 of this agreement. The Ministry of Defense of the United States can uh, extend assistance to the Ministry of Health of Ukraine in the area of joint biological research determining threats from biological agents and uh, working out a response to them as relates to, and I quote, the to the dangerous pathogens deployed on objects on the territory of Ukraine. And I would like to underscore here that biological threats, because of its very nature, knows no borders. There is no region in the world today who can feel safe. The United States are overseeing several hundreds of laboratories in about 30 countries in the Middle East, in Africa, Southeast Asia, and also on the perimeter of the former USSR. Placing it under international verification is something the Washington cate categorically refusing to do. They've blocked since 2001 a legally binding protocol under the Biological Toxic Weapons Convention about creating an effective verification mechanism to, con to ensure compliance. And and this can but lead us to the thought that the United States have something to hide. I call upon colleagues in these regions to think about what kind of an activity Washington is conducting on their territory, what the consequences for your people will be.
I can foresee what the reaction will be from our Western colleagues, who I'm sure are going to be saying now that all of this information is fake and Russian propaganda. But this is self-delusion, and I do not think this will be helpful to the European people in case there are outbreaks in Ukraine or neighboring states with further spread um, and bringing in their wake dangerous diseases. The risk of this is very real, given the interest that the radical nationalist groups in Ukraine are showing towards the work with dangerous pathogens conducted together with the Ministry of Defense of the United States. We also know that in any in, in the case of any such incident, Pentagon told uh, their Ukrainian uh, um, colleagues to immediately accuse the armed forces of the Russian Federation of this, uh, say that they are striking against scientific and medical institutions and to or, or link these incidents with the Russian diversionary groups. The Ministry of Defense of Russia continues analyzing the biological situation in Ukraine and the materials we keep receiving. What we told you today is, is a very small portion of the information that we have. Detailed information is something that we will disseminate in the very near future. As an official document of Security Council, you will be able to study it. We think it is our duty to keep the Security Council informed of the situation when it comes to the military biological activity by the United States in Ukraine, it creates real risk for international peace and security. And we intend to revert to the discussion of this topic in the very near future. We do not exclude the possibility of uh, invoking the mechanism of Articles 5 and 6 of the Biological Toxic Weapons Convention, Convention. At present, however, we expect to hear responses from the American side to the questions that we put. I thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you to our briefers for your remarks this morning. Russia asked the Security Council for today's meeting for the sole purpose of lying and spreading disinformation, and that is exactly what you have heard from the Russian PR this morning. You also heard from Ms. Nak Nakamisu that the UN is not aware of any biological or chemical weapons programs in Ukraine. Last month, Secretary Blinken laid out with tragic accuracy what Russia was about to do. He specifically warned that Russia would manufacture a pretext for attack and even cautioned that Russia would fabricate allegations about chemical or biological weapons to justify its own violent attacks against the Ukrainian people. Today, the world is watching Russia do exactly what we warned it would. Russia is attempting to use the Security Council to legitimize disinformation and deceive people to justify President Putin's war of choice against the Ukrainian people. And China, too, has been spreading disinformation in support of Russia's outrageous claims. I will say this once. Ukraine does not have a biological weapons program. There are no Ukrainian biological weapons laboratories supported by the United States, not near Russia's border or anywhere. So here are the facts. Ukraine owns and operates its own public health laboratory infrastructure. These facilities make it possible to detect and diagnose diseases like COVID-19 which benefit us all. The United States has assisted Ukraine to do this safely and securely. This is work that has been done proudly, clearly, and out in the open. This work has everything to do with protecting the health of people. It has absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing to do with biological weapons. In fact, it is Russia that has long maintained a biological weapon program in violation of international law. It is Russia that has well a well-documented history of using chemical weapons. It is Russia who is the aggressor here. It was Russia, Russian operatives who poisoned Alexei Navalny and Sergei and Yulia Skripal with nerve agents. 
It is Russia that continues to support the Assad regime in Syria and shield it from accountability when the UN and the OPCW have confirmed that Assad has repeatedly used chemical weapons over the past several years. And we're deeply concerned that Russia's calling for this meeting is a potential false flag effort in action, exactly the kind we have been warning about, including from Secretary Blinken here in the Security Council last month. Russia has a track record of falsely accusing other countries of the very violations that Russia itself is perpetrating. And given that, and consistent with our previous statements, we have serious concerns that Russia may be planning to use chemical or biological agents against the Ukrainian people. The intent behind these lies seem clear, and it is deeply troubling. We believe Russia could use chemical or biological agents for assassinations as part of a staged or false flag incident or to support tactical military operations. From the beginning, our strategy to counter Russia's tactics has been to share what we know with the world transparently. And candidly, we have been right more than often, more than we'd like to. We're not going to let Russia get away with lying to the world or staining the integrity of the Security Council by using this forum as a venue for legitimizing Putin's violence. Russia has attacked homes, schools, orphanages, and hospitals. Russia has attacked civilian infrastructure, including water and sanitation facilities. Their forces are laying Ukrainian cities under siege. Hundreds of thousands of civilians now don't have access to electricity for heat or drinking water to stay alive. Russia is the aggressor, aggressor here. And despite Russia's best efforts, the media and everyday Ukrainians are documenting this truth on the ground. Russia can't paint over the front page of the New York Times, which on Monday featured the bodies of a Ukrainian mother and her two children who died while trying to cross a bridge outside Kyiv in their attempt to flee to safety. Russia cannot cover up the work of AP news reporters who captured a doctor attempting to resuscitate an 18-month-old Kirill who died from Russian shelling in Maripol. Russia cannot suppress the social media posts confirmed and amplified by CBS News that told the story of the 11-year-old Ukrainian boy who fled to Slovakia by himself with only a passport, a plastic bag, and a phone number scrawled on his hands. Russia cannot silence the Al Jazeera report of Russian soldiers terrorizing Ukrainian cities. And Ukrainian journalists are risking their lives every day to deliver to the world the latest on-the-ground facts such as Novo Vremny uh, reporting on the reckless behavior of Russian forces toward Ukraine's nuclear facilities. Russia is failing in its quest to create an alternative reality. In fact, not even Russian diplomats can keep their propaganda straight. Just yesterday, the Kremlin spokesman said he didn't have clear information about the Russian forces who fired on a maternity hospital. Then the foreign minister himself denied Russia attacked Ukraine at all, right before admitting that Russia deliberately targeted this maternity hospital in Maripol. Their fabrications didn't matter because the world had already seen the searing images broadcast on CNN of bloodied pregnant women being evacuated from the scene of Russia's attack on the hospital. Even Russian, Russia's own citizens are tiring of such lies. Russian athletes are writing no war on their shoes and on TV, TV cameras. Russian citizens are marching in the streets and protesting Putin's war of choice. And even Russian state TV pundits, Putin's own propaganda arm, have called for Putin to stop the military action. 
This is why we didn't object to holding today's meeting. Today's meeting has confirmed our predictions, reveal Russia's objectives to the world, and expose Russia's lies for what they are, a malicious effort to cover for the atrocities being committed by Russia as part of their illegal and unprovoked attack on Ukraine. It is a page directly out of the Russian playbook, and it will not convince us one bit. The world is watching. Photographic and video evidence is mounting, and you will be held to account for your actions. We will not let atrocities slide. Unlike the Russian government, whose first instinct is to silence, we are confident that truth and transparency will prevail. We call on President Putin to end this unprovoked, unconscionable war against the Ukrainian people. Thank you. Mr. President, the situation in Ukraine is still rapidly evolving with growing complexity and sensitivity. What is most needed now continues to be to intensify diplomatic efforts, reduce tension, and bring the Ukrainian issue back to the track of a political settlement as soon as possible, while making efforts to prevent a massive large-scale humanitarian crisis. Stop fighting and hostilities is a widespread desire of the international community. Peace negotiations are the only viable means to achieve that goal. Recently, Russia and Ukraine have held multiple rounds of direct talks, and the two foreign ministers held a high-level meeting yesterday. All these are positive steps towards achieving peace. The international community should continue to encourage and support Russia and Ukraine in their negotiations and create necessary environment and conditions for such peace talks. China will continue to work with the international community and play its part in de-escalating the situation and seeking peace. Mr. President, China attaches great importance to biosafety and security and consistently stands for complete prohibition and a thorough destruction of all WMDs, including biological weapons, firmly opposes the development, possession, and the use of biological and chemical weapons by any country and under any circumstances, and encourage those countries that have not yet destroyed their stockpiles of chemical weapons to do so as soon as possible. The purposes and the principles of the Biological Weapons Convention should be strictly upheld. Biological weapons are weapons of mass destruction. Any information and leads on biomilitary activities should trigger high attention from the international community. China has noted with concern relevant information released by Russia to upheld the Biological Weapons Convention is an obligation for all state parties. The concerns raised by Russia should be properly addressed. China urges relevant parties to effectively implement their obligation under the Convention provide a comprehensive clarification and accept a multilateral verification. We have taken note of the press report that WHO has advised to the Ukrainian government to destroy the pathogens located in those labs in order to prevent the spread of infectious diseases. We look forward to be receiving more specific information on this. Under the current situation and for the sake of public health, we call for ensuring the safety and security of relevant laboratories. Mr. President, the U.S. representative in her statement made a groundless allegations against China, which we firmly reject. The international community have been raising concerns about the U.S. military biological activities. They have around the world 336 laboratories. This number comes from the 
information provided by the U.S. to the Conference of State Parties of the BCW, the U.S. said they are for transparency. If they believe the relevant information is fake, all they can do is to provide us with relevant data, provide clarification so that the international community community can draw a conclusion by itself. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, biological weapons were the first category of weapon of mass destruction to be subject to a comprehensive prohibition. The, biologi the Biological Weapons Convention, BWC, adopted in 1972, binds all state parties to the obligation to, and I quote, never in any circumstances to develop, produce, stockpile, or otherwise acquire such weapons, end of quote. Brazil believes that any accusations regarding violations of the basic prohibitions set out by the BWC are extremely serious and, as such, must be thoroughly substantiated by solid evidence. Such evidence must be presented to and confirmed by an independent and impartial authority, as foreseen in Article 4 of the Biological Weapons Convention. It is unfortunate that such investigation mechanisms are not strong enough at the moment. Brazil also believes that legitimate scientific and technological research on biosafety and biosecurity should be kept distinct and separate from possible violations of the prohibition against the development and production of biological weapons if we wish to preserve the BWC regime. Research into new and dangerous pathogens should be subject to strict transparency mechanisms. Brazil has long favored the negotiation of a multilateral verification protocol as a complement to the, D, to the PWC, with additional measures to guarantee protection and security against emerging biological threats. The situation before the Council today only reinforces the urgency and the necessity of such a mechanism. Brazil strongly condemns the use or threat of use of weapons of mass destruction, including biological and chemical weapons, anywhere, by anyone, under any circumstances. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, what conclusion could be drawn from the discussion we've had today? As we expected, our Western colleagues, first and foremost, neither one of them addressed the substance of the issue we put forward. When my American colleague was uh, throwing thunderbolts and accused us, as we expected, of propaganda, two things came to mind. First of all, a Russian saying, which, according to which a guilty mind is never at ease. Uh, the louder people are trying to shift the blame on us, the greater uh, is our conviction that we hit the nail on the head when we're talking about their um, um, nefarious activity in Ukraine. Secondly, uh, I, I remember another story which uh, was mentioned m many times in many contexts about the container shown by the Colin Powell some time ago here in this room, which became the foundation for the United States going into Iraq and the, which led to a huge level of uh, suffering, suffering of victims and destruction, which then reverberated in the whole region reverberated also in the form of a terrorist organization called ISIL. Uh, that is the real palm door uh, that the Albanian colleague mentioned today in his statement. Many of you said that you are unaware of the military biological programs in Ukraine. That doesn't mean that they didn't exist in actual fact. 
the military Military development is a secret enterprise, and those who are involved in that do not report to Mr. Nakam to Ms. Nakamitsu about it. I also recall Iraq and Mosul, which were razed to the ground and buried under their rubble thousands of uh, civilians, and this was done by the forces of the coalition headed by the United States. And the bodies uh, remain there for several months. And I do not recall um, ire, righteous ire, on the part of the colleagues about this. We raised this issue many times, but this died, and this died and was buried, and people prefer not to re recall that. But on the other hand, we hear every day about the atrocities of the Russian army attacks on hospitals, kindergartens, schools, maternity hospitals using a cluster bombs, something that ha that that was refuted repeatedly by our Ministry of Defense. The maternity hospital number one in Mariupol has become, has, has become um, the common parlance in this regard. Let me ask you this. Did you listen to what we said here in this room on Monday, 7th of March, when we said that the fighters, the radicals, converted that building into a, an, an attack base? This is something that we warned about even that. Apparently, you don't listen or you don't hear what it is that we say. Did you see the photos of the allegedly destroyed maternity hospital, the building of the hospital destroyed by a bomb? You, what you can see there is a building without windows, but it's not destroyed. Here are the photos. Can you imagine what would have happened to a building if it underwent a bomb or a strike or a shelling, as well as to those who were inside the building? What would have happened to it? So we have the videos from inside the building. Here they are. And they show the dis that there is disorder, overturned furniture, and untouched intact chairs. Once again, can you imagine what kind of destruction would have remained in the wake of a building hit by a rocket or a bomb? Ask military specialists, they will tell you. They have already said that. They show the photos of a crater near the building, which resulted from uh, an exploded mine. At the same time, we are being t told about the 17 wounded in the building, and not a single death, by the way. And by way of evidence, what is showed is a false picture of a Ukrainian blogger, Mariana Podgurska, here, which it was, she was shot by an AP stringer, Evgeny Maloletka. This blogger uh, lady is uh, using two different kinds of makeup uh, to present herself as two different women in, in photographs. And this is something that, that was revealed by the network users themselves. We are dismayed by the dirty campaign to blame us for intentionally shelling a civilian uh, infrastructure. You are accusing us of propaganda and fake whilst ignoring a huge number of fakes which are being churned out in Ukraine and in the West uh, by, so as to conduct a special psychological operation. At the same time, you coyly going over um, in uh, silence over the fact that you have basically shut off your access to Russian sources of information. We found a great deal of new things these days about the freedom of speech that you seem to champion. I w would like to react uh, now to my uh, UK colleague, she quoted Minister Lavrov in completely as usual when he said that we did not start the war. This is the exact word. We did not start this war. We want to end it. And it is true that the war was not begun by us. It started eight years ago by the Kiev uh, authorities in the Donbas. Yesterday in the internet, we show a video where the Ukrainians, where military form um, near Kharkov, let, let's say, are shooting down what is supposed to be 
a what is supposed to be a Russian plane using a movable rocket launcher. There is a car right next to it. The car in which 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 apparently they used to arrive there. Here's a picture. Uh, white color t Toyota bearing a logo of the United Nations. We've already asked this question to the representative of this secretariat, and the answer was that UN vehicles are not being used by the Ukrainian territorial def de defense. Uh, um, we insist on this incident being investigated by the UN. Even it turns out that this is not a U UN car, Nonetheless, using a UN logo on a car which is used for military activities is unacceptable. I think. I know that. I know that you expect me to re respond, but we're not going to give any more airtime to the lies that you're hearing today. It's beneath this council, and there's only one aggressor here, and that is Russia. And we hope they will be able to find it in their conscience to end the attacks and stop the suffering of the Ukrainian people. Thank you.